Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a simple ground explosion in Blender 4.2 or higher. Let's start out with a fresh scene and add in a plane and a sphere. Let's scale the sphere a little down and press Ctrl A and apply the scale. With the sphere we want to create a weight paint animation on the plane, that's why we have to move the sphere through the plane. So let's move the sphere up, let's go around to frame 10 and press I on the keyboard to set a keyframe. Let's move to frame 20, press GZ to move the sphere down and drag it right under the plane. Let's press I again. Now we should have an animation like this. For the weight paint to work we have to add more geometry to the plane, so select it, press tab to go into edit mode, right click and hit subdivide. Open the drop down right here and in number of cuts type in 100. With the plane selected go into the physics tab and add in a dynamic paint. Select the canvas and press add. Let's change the start and end frame to maybe around 50, we don't need that much for the weight paint. In the surface type change it from paint to weight. We also have to activate the dissolve effect and change the time to 15 frames, this should be good enough. Let's open the output tab and hit the plus sign so we can create a vertex group. Now before we can cache it we have to select our sphere and also add in a dynamic paint but this time change it from canvas to brush and add in a new one. In here we don't have to make any changes, it should be fine. Select the plane again and under cache just hit bake. Now if we select the plane and go into the weight paint mode, we should see on the frame 10 to 20 a circle of color appear. To see it even better we can hide the sphere over here and scroll through the timeline and now a red circle should appear and dissolve slowly for 15 frames as we said it before. This circle right here will indicate our ground explosion, so where the fire should start emitting and also when it should stop. Alright, let's switch back into object mode and let's start adding the fire and smoke simulation. Therefore with the plane selected press F3 and type in quick smoke and choose this one. You can move the domain around and make sure that it covers the, the whole explosion that should be in here. With the domain selected we can go into the fluid settings and change some values. The resolution I will change to 64 for now. Later on if we finalize the simulation I will change it either to 128 or if you have a super strong PC you can go all the way up to 256. This will take a lot of caching time but in the end it will look the best. But for now just to play around with the values I will leave it at 64. Let's scroll to border collision and select the button. This just makes sure that the fire and smoke will collide with the floor. Also select adaptive domain, this will increase the caching time a little bit. The vorticity is how crazy the fire and smoke simulation goes. For now I will set it to 0.2 but we you can increase or decrease this value to your liking. Under dissolve I will also activate this and set the time to something around 35. You can also up this value if you want the smoke to last longer. You can also activate the noise to make the fire and smoke a little bit more interesting. And in the fire settings you can kind of control how long the fire should last in the explosion. The reaction speed right here as it says is the speed of burning reaction. So the higher the value the smaller the flames. For the explosion I want the fire to last a little bit longer so I'll change this to maybe 0.5 or even go lower to 0.4. Change the directory of the cache if you want to set it in a new location and change the start and the end frame. For me I think the explosion won't last longer than 100 frames so I will change it from 1 to 100. So that the domain actually knows we want to use the weight paint animation we did before we have to select the plane and also in the physics fluid tab we can change the flow type to fire and smoke so we actually have fire and smoke in the simulation. And under here in vertex group we can now choose the DP weight paint we did before. Let's open up floor source and make sure is planner is checked. Also activate initial velocity and the initial velocity of Z, so the Z axis going up should be something around 10. So this just means that the fire will burst up in the beginning and don't just float around at the bottom. And this should be it for now. We can select the domain again and scroll all the way down to the cache, change the type to all and hit bake. After the bake is done we can look at the scene. For now it looks something like this. It starts at frame 10 and the explosion goes up and then spreads around. For me this looks quite alright. 
maybe the fire lasts a little bit too long so therefore we could increase the reaction speed as I showed you before to reduce the fire but for demonstration purpose this is all right for me. Let's hop over into the shadings tab and let's shade this fire. I will go into the rendered viewport. It doesn't matter if you use Cycles or EV, the texture will work for both. If you use EV, I will show you later some render settings that will help to make the explosion look a little bit better. Alright, with the smoke domain selected, we have already a principal volume shader in here. And just for the looks of it, I will add in a simple sunlight, just to get a feeling how it will look in the end. In here, we have to add in a volume info node, this one right here. Drag out the density and add in a color ramp and plug the color ramp into the density. Because we can't see the smoke right now, we have to add in a math node, this one right here, and plug it into it in between the color ramp and the density. Change it from add to multiply and multiply the value by 100. We can see the smoke already a little bit better, but to increase this effect, we can slide this white slider to the left side and you can see the smoke gets denser and denser. All right, so far so good, but now we want to add in the fire. Therefore, we have to duplicate the color ramp and the multiply node. So select them and press shift D to duplicate them and move them down. This time connect the color ramp with the flame info and put the value into emission strings. As you can see now it's really white and super bright, so we can play around with the color ramp values again and move the black value a little closer to the right and also play around with the white value and as we can see we can kind of separate the fire from the smoke. To give the fire some color we select the color ramp and press shift D again to duplicate it, connect it again with the flame and put this one into the emission color. Now let's add in a third color right here and move this one to the right side and change it to a bright yellow, something like this. And the middle color to a dark orange, something like this. Just move the colors around until you find the, the settings you like. If you want to increase the emission, you can also up the value right here to maybe 200, so we have a little brighter glow but right now 100 is enough because we will add some glare to the explosion later. Okay, this is all there is to it for the explosion. So we have a bright fire in the beginning, which will boost up and then dissolve into smoke. All right, let's look at the render settings in Eevee. Therefore, we have to open the volume settings right here and change the resolution from one to eight to one to two. As you can already see, it's much sharper, but it's still not that dense as before. So therefore we have to increase this step right here to maybe 128. So double it and the max depth also to 32. And also make sure you will activate the shadows right here and activate the volume shadows. As you can see, this will make the explosion look way better. And we can also increase this to 32 steps. But as always, the cycle render will look better in most cases. But if you want to use EV, you can do that too. And just play around more with the, with the lighting and the looks of it. All right, then let's say we want to add in some glow. Therefore, we can go to render and render one image out. If the render is completed, we can go into the compositing tab and select the use node. Let's press shift A and add in a viewer node, this one right here. Let's connect it to the image. Go to view and fit backdrop to available space so we can see it in the background better. And now to add in some glow, we have to add in this glare filter right here. Connect them with the top one and also connect it with the viewer node so we can see what's going on. Change it from streaks to bloom. Up the size and play around with that threshold. So let's put it to 0.6 or 0.5 whatever looks best for you and you can see we have glow and now if you render the animation glow will be added to each frame. All right if you have some more questions about any explosions or fire simulations check out my channel and if you can't find it there just write it in the comments and I can do a new video about that too. Thanks a lot for watching I hope you could learn something and I will see you the next time. Peace out.